Hello, my name is Dan Klimek with Siskin Company, and our safety meeting today is going to be on review of hazardous energy isolation and control, more commonly known as lockout tagout. The typical policy you have is going to be for when a piece of machinery is shut down for servicing repairs or testing and other kinds of an adjust, adjustments, that you're going to de-energize that equipment to make sure that it's safe to work on. Your typical policy will address things like the energy sources of that particular equipment. It's going to talk about the things that you're going to do for repair because it might involve different isolation than if you're modifying or inspecting that machine. Your policy should also deal with things like other people's tags and the fact that if a piece of equipment is isolated that you understand and recognize what that tag means, what that isolation procedure means, and even if you're not going to be doing any work on that equipment, that you leave it alone, that you stay away from it, and basically you respect that other person's tag. When you isolate equipment, uh, you're really going to look at, at all the energy sources for that equipment. And the energy sources you want to control might be pressurized liquids, gases, if there's any kind of chemicals. You're going to look at hydraulic, pneumatic pressure. You want to look at thermal energy. There's always the electrical, the mechanical, and things like radioactive sources. Make sure that all of those are controlled so that as you, the worker, are by those sources, you know that they're not going to move unexpectedly or that there's no potential energy there that's going to cause an injury to you. When we actually start looking at locking out or isolating equipment, who does that? With the OSHA standard talks about an authorized person. There needs to be a person who really is in charge of the isolation. They know the equipment. They are authorized to isolate, to shut down, to hang the tags, to control the energy. The employer is the one who normally dictates who that authorized person is going to be. And in your case, many times you are going to go on a location the operator is going to have isolated that piece of equipment, so your job is really to verify the isolation and then start hanging your personal tags to, to match up with the isolation that was already done by the operator. The authorized person, as I mentioned, is going to determine where it needs to be isolated to make sure the piece of equipment is safe, and you would want to look at that and verify those type of things. The authorized person normally as part of the isolation will test start the equipment. They'll get it isolated, they'll have all the valves closed, all the energy sources shut off, and then they will do something to verify that indeed the machine doesn't start, it's not energized, things aren't going to flow into the space, whatever it is. And in most cases they also record what they've done to isolate that equipment. When the authorized person gives you the okay to work, then you would hang your tag or locks on those same isolation points. When you're, when you're doing the work, that the idea is, is that everybody on your crew has verified the isolation. They've all used their locks, their tags, whatever the case may be. They understand the requirements of the job, and they work under that isolated equipment, and they don't go beyond the bounds of that isolation. When the job is done, you pick up all your tools, you'll remove your personal locks or tags, you'll notify all the people that are working with you that you're done with the job, because it could be other crews, other companies, whatever the case may be. And then when everybody's done, you would also notify the authorized person that the work is finished, they'll come and verify things and, and basically put the equipment back in service. So as, final, as a final review, when we look at lockout and tagout, what we want to do is control all energy sources. That's really the, the issue. A lot of times we think about electrical energy and we forget about the mechanical, the potential energy, the chemical, the thermal, other types of things that may be causing, um, you know, that, that, that may cause a potential injury. That equipment is always locked out and tagged out by an authorized person somebody by the employer or the owner of the equipment that knows the isolation, knows the equipment, and knows how to isolate that so it really is safe for you to work on. That you take personal responsibility. You look at the isolation, you verify that it makes sense to you, and you hang your personal tags. And one of the most important things is that you understand the lockout tagout procedures of your company well enough that you know 
that if you see somebody else's lock or tag on a piece of equipment, you don't touch it. You leave it alone. It's their life that's riding on it. You would expect them to leave it alone. If you were doing the work, you leave it alone for them. No matter what your work assignment is, understand that if that is locked out and tagged out, you don't touch it. You go back to the, to the authorized person, let them know what has happened, and have them do the troubleshooting to make sure that it's safe for everybody there. This presentation is available at www.gomsea.org.